We live in a dystopian world, my friends, filled with crime, corruption, and poverty. Ruled by mighty power-hungry corporations and heartless, brutal governments. Each year, we're facing another global crisis, and each day, we're forced to face the consequences of the previous ones. The corporate-backed mass media like N54 or WNS are feeding society with bland, easy to digest pap of processed news, brainwashing programs, and commercials enforcing the ever popular trend to buy more and think less. They do this because it's easier to control and manipulate the ignorant, uneducated sheeple than those that are educated, well-informed, and aware of the world around them. And yet you're here because you don't want to be another mindless sheep, aren't you? In reality, there is a huge need for free media. There are dozens of indie news stations and information sites, and the first step to independent thought is to seek them out. We, the Night City Inquirer, are one such site. You won't see our advertisements on the display downtown, but we're here, maintaining our ever-moving website on the net. We're not some clueless rebels straining for influence against major corporations. We just present you news, essays, and stories from the real world, showing things as they are without the corporate bias and icing on the top. We're collaborating with courageous independent writers, correspondents, investigative journalists, and experts in various fields to provide you with real information, giving you an opportunity to think for yourself and to motivate you to search for further genuine info. Because in today's world, knowledge and the ability to distinguish truth from fake news are the real superpowers. Do the big companies try to shut us down? Occasionally, but in most cases, they don't pay much attention to us. We don't affect their ratings, and they have much bigger fish to fry, mostly fighting each other. Most of our info isn't restricted anyway. It's just that kind of info is omitted, hushed, or unpopular, because it isn't in line with the corporation's interest. Have you ever heard Petro Chem recently lost trials at the Supreme Court in Spain. That Netwatch was nearly kicked out of Australia, and Militech backed mercenaries were forced to withdraw from Iceland after the joint military intervention by the Scandinavian countries. These are facts, but you won't hear it in the news, at least not from the corporate controlled media in Night City. The fact that we're not at war with the corporations doesn't mean that we're not writing stories big enough to make their CEOs shudder. That's why we're careful and protective of our associates and collaborators. Some of them are top-notch news reporters who write for us under fake names, hiding their identities so not to lose their jobs or lives. We value the privacy of our contacts too. You can provide us with some authentic, interesting material without fear that your identity will be divulged to the public. So why this form? Why text? Have you ever wondered why nomads speak with such strange, often overly sophisticated way? That's because their mobile homeschooling system forces them to actually read, not simply watch the news. We strongly believe that the access of modern technologies harms our interpersonal communication, affecting our relationships and communities. Plugging yourself into the feeder makes you vulnerable to intrusive commercials and pushy propaganda. Reading long form text is a dying ability in our modern world. So to prevent the extinction of the written word, we've elected to support the form at our website. The collapse of the old USA was one of the major world events of the 21st century. Even if the modern United States, or the new United States as they are called today, were to reunite with the free states, 
it'd still be a totally different country than it was 50 years ago. We could see signs of the collapse years before it occurred. The first three corporate wars fought between the years 1990 and 2016 strengthened the position of the mega corporations, giving them more authority than most of the world governments, and the USA was no exception. Affiliations between politicians and corporations ceased to be regarded as conflict of interest. Rather, they were treated as advantageous in the worlds of big business and politics. As the companies gained unfettered access to the world's natural resources, environmental collapse and climate change were inevitable. Acid rain and dust storms caused by extreme deforestation soon became the America's biggest problems. Those natural disasters were accompanied by political ones. Thermonuclear war in the Middle East turned that part of the world into a radioactive wasteland, causing a global oil crisis. The US government tried to save itself by covertly manipulating European and American stock markets, but this short-sighted strategy backfired when the news was leaked to the public. Worldwide financial meltdown shook the economies of almost every country on the globe, allowing corporations to gain even more power. Meanwhile, in the USA, a coup launched by the Gang of Four, a coalition of government agencies, effectively ended federal democracy. Many states succeeded, declaring themselves free states that time also marked the emergence of nomads, a new American social class of migrants in search of water, jobs, and safety from political turmoil. Many cities and towns were deserted. Most sociologists agreed that the collapse was the worst catastrophe of the 21st century. And then came the Fourth Corporate War. The Fourth Corporate War began as a race between two rival Aquatech agencies. In late 2021, two oceanic exploitation corporations, Sino and Otec, vied for control over the remains of a third corpo, IHA. The rivalry was bitter, and hostilities escalated quickly, rapidly after a brutal fiscal struggle. Otec gained the upper hand by hiring Militech to protect their security interests. Sino responded in kind and contracted with Arasaka. Thus, the Fourth Corporate War began, otherwise known as the Ocean War. As is always, the case in early stages of corporate conflict, the first attacks were carried out discreetly. Some mid-level corporate officials were assassinated, and some dirty information was stolen and revealed. Mercenary Netrunners were hired by both sides, and they made dozens of attacks on data caches and stock holdings, which wrought chaos on the global economy. Those events forced Netwatch to place a temporary communication embargo on Arasaka and Militech, but the security firms were just getting warmed up. By the time Eurobank had successfully mediated a truce between Sino and Otec, the real conflict had transitioned to Militech and Arasaka. By early 2022, a new struggle between the security giants had begun, known today as the Shadow War. This marked the second stage of the fourth global corporate war. Conflict during the Shadow War phase was more overt and brutal. Mercs and edge runners flocked to the banners of both security corporations, executing covert ops and raids on military and research facilities. Despite the visceral nature of the conflict, the deadliest battles actually occurred on the net when corporate and mercenary net runners released a new generation of devastating viral programs upon each other. Some of this code continued to operate long after the death of its creators, leaving vast areas of the net 
irreparably dark and dangerous. By June of 2022, Militech and Arasaka decided that nice ties and subtlety were altogether no longer necessary and the conflict reached the third stage called the Hot War. Fighting between the two military corporations escalated to full-scale war. Cities like Rio de Janeiro were literally reduced to rubble and their populations killed or made refugees. Global trade was paralyzed by military action and market collapse. International trade routes were hit hard and piracy raged free and unchecked. As the flames of physical conflict burned bright, Netwatch struggled to protect the net. Weakened by the destruction of global servers and databanks and ravaged by thousands of malicious viruses and demon class programs, the net as we knew it slowly died. Finally, the countries of the world became weary of corporate conflict. Some governments openly blamed Militech and Arasaka for the situation and withdrew their support for corporations, nationalizing the weakened holdings in those countries. The free state of Southern California seized the Los Angeles headquarters of both companies. Texas and some European countries soon follow suit. Arasaka Towers in Night City were of the last of Arasaka's American headquarters to fall, wiped out by a tactical nuclear weapon detonated by a group of unidentified mercenaries. Some sources implicated the so-called Atlantis group, including such modern legends as rogue Morgan Blackhand and Johnny Silverhand, but there wasn't enough evidence to confirm the group's involvement. Morgan and Johnny were never seen again as the Eversaka Tower incident and Rogue had repeatedly denied their participation in the operation. Under pressure from the Japanese government, Arasaka finally conceded defeat at the end of 2023. Militech emerged victorious but was nearly crippled as their rival. <laughs>